Hi guys and welcome to Book Break. Uh, today we're with the lovely Kate Morton. Do you remember her from our Cornwall adventures? That was fun, wasn't that it? That was a lot <laughs> of fun. It was a ride. We need to go back and do that again. Let's just go, we'll go now. Mm. It's the sun's out. Let's Perfect. just do it. London's old news. <laughs> tired of London, tired of life. Um, so we're on Kate's, what's this, a balcony? A patio? Oh, it's a bit of both. It we're is. in the trees um, and we're here to recommend you some summer reads. Yes. Um, so you've got a pile of them. I've I got do. a pile that I'm very excited about. Um, and we'll see who can convince each other to take Perfect. which books to the beach. And then <laughs> we'll swap. Um, I think like summer reads are a little bit different from other reads because I know that I can get into a book a bit more, I can live it a bit more, and I think the setting's way more important. Yes. I don't know if you agree. No, I, I, I do. I know exactly what you mean, but you know, I think it's it's quite an English idea because... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like, you're doing your English thing again, Lena. <laughs> I know, I'd never heard of it uh, in Australia because it's basically... Oh yeah, you're always summer. summer. It, it's summer no, a lot of the time. Whereas you don't here, appreciate it. Uh, but now I really understand. So, you, you know, it's even better to be able to relax and enjoy and really sort of sink into a book. Yeah, so I love we're it. really into summer. We have summer scents, we have summer clothes, <laughs> we have summer books. So my first pick right. um, is Summer Days and Summer Nights. Now, That's this is appropriate. A, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you can read it day and night. It's a day in to summer. night look, if you will. <laughs> um, so this has got beautiful coloured edges and it is a compilation of lots of short stories by lots of amazing authors that I know have all of their own back catalogues. And what I like to do in the summer is take some time to work out what I'm going to read in the winter. So reading short stories like this is like, oh, I trust that author. They've got a great story, you know? So it's basically shopping. Um, this is real, there's a real methodology. <laughs> oh, here. no, yeah. There's like an absolute like, psychopathic like level this. of like planning to my that. summer reading. Um, so this and this one has some beautiful foiling as well. So it looks very flashy That's because nice. in the summer you're out a lot more. So people see what you're reading and it will be shining. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so on theme. <laughs> Sticking with sort of a summer idea. Now, mm -hmm. I have to confess, this was my last summer absolute favourite book, Rising Ground by Philip Marsden. And I actually gave copies of this to uh, just about everybody. <laughs> Anyone who could start it throwing on. them off the I room. really did. It was becoming a problem. It was embarrassing. But I absolutely love this book. So it's um, set in Cornwall. It's mm -hmm. non-fiction. And it's, I guess... Uh, the genre if you had to give it one it's it's like nature writing okay but travel writing too but travel by foot so um, Philip Marsden lives in Cornwall and this book follows um, him as he walks around Cornwall and it really is as it says a search for the spirit of place because he um, in the same way I do feels that Cornwall is it's a special place it's such an mm. almost enchanted place uh, yeah. I mean, if I can use that word it's not just beautiful aesthetically but there's this sort of history and mystery and memory and folk tale and there's just something intrinsic to the place and he with his beautiful um, prose manages to capture it in here I couldn't put it down so it's a truly it's wonderful and enjoyable book and see it's a proof I dog it is yeah it's a kind of tatty well I believe loved. you on that one in fact I should confess I read it while I was in Cornwall oh so really so you're wandering around that, like <laughs> <laughs> nose in the book and just looking over exactly but uh, it was a really moving mm. book I, I really loved it and it uh, for me he did manage to do that thing that you always hope to do with words which is to use these um, sort of funny black ink on a white page and yet convey um, place yeah. and sensation my next book right. and this one everybody in the office has been going crazy about I'm so excited to read it uh, and I, I can handle a thriller in summer mm, mm. because the days are longer so it's not dark for you know I, I can't read it in the dark so it's good that I can I take my time in the summer yes. to read thrillers uh, while I can um, so this is about a book within a book which is what I really love so I'd, in I like the it lake already. house you talk about like authors like yeah. the main character is an author right yes. and the main character this is an author as well and she she her, her sister is murdered in front of her and she sees the face of the man that killed her and he never gets caught. And then one day she realizes he's a TV personality and he's famous. So she writes a book about yes. what he did and then she only gives one interview. Oh about the goodness. book and it's to him. <gasps> That's all I know. That's all I know. But I'm already I'm already like beside myself. But apparently, you know, she's an author too. Yes. So is she which fiction is, is which? You know, you're oh. reading a fiction book, but is she also I you I can't have it. I'm reading it first. <laughs> I'll hand it to you. This is non <laughs> non fiction nice as well. I know, Look isn't it this. beautiful? Uh, so I'm reading this at the moment, and I love it because it brings together uh, so many of my uh, sort of obsessions. Yeah. So. What's it called? I, it's called Charles Dickens and the Great Theatre of the World, and it's by Simon Callow, uh, who of course is a you know fabulous mm. actor and writer. Um, so. I love to write, obviously, and I love books, but the world of the theatre is 
is my <laughs> very, <true>. very... <laughs> Books made live. Oh, <laughs> it, it is, but it's all storytelling. And, yeah. you know, I'm, it, I, I always... I've said it so many times, but, mm -hmm. you know, I love the way you can disappear into the world of a book. But even, even more, the only time I ever think there's anything I could enjoy doing more than writing a book is when I'm at the theatre. And you're sitting there in the, um, you know, in your seat, and the, the lights are on, and there's that hubbub of noise, and then the ding, 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 ding of the, you know, quick, yeah. quick last call, and then the lights go down, and everyone goes silent, and there's like the whole audience draws collective breath, and then the curtain yeah. goes up, and this world comes to life right yeah. in front of your eyes, and that's the the one moment when I go. <gasps> I yeah. need to work in the theatre. I need to do it right in now. In between stage. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's like oh, between the I theatre adaptation of The Lake House. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> exactly. So this, mm. uh, Simon Callow obviously shares that love and so did Charles Dickens. So I feel a great kinship with both of them when I read this book. And um, aside from the theatre love, I adore Charles Dickens um, as, a, as a writer, but as a person too, the mm. more I read about him. Because um, yeah, he did loads more than just write books, didn't he? He, he, really he like ran a newspaper, he ran and he was, he was all over it. Absolutely. I start to think there's more than one Charles Dickens. Uh, it, and, and we really get that sense from this book that he was a man of such immense energy and vitality. I mean, his charity work was incredible. His work on copyright, he, you know, mm. he was phenomenal. This one is called Invincible Summer, and again, everybody in the office, because I work in publishing, I get so excited by books because there's literally book lovers surrounding me from nine to five every day talking about the books that they love. It is the so best world. So it's like the worst and best thing ever. <laughs> um, so this is about four graduates uh, who graduate from university and it revisits them every summer and how close together they've got and how far apart oh. they've got and how they kind of navigate it, but through summers, which is obviously appropriate. I'm in that stage now where I'm like, oh, they're my friends from uni. Are we ever going to be, you know, yes. like it's, you always what feel you like you're now? dragging each other together and then having yes. to send each other off into yes. the world again and not knowing when you're going to see them. And I really love that because I love of um, time. You yeah, know, time is such an, an interesting way to tell stories, and that's such a, a and clever way stamp. of doing it. Yeah, because you can't you can't change when summer is. Exactly. <laughs> it's quite irregulated. <laughs> Sometimes you'll go from like these. <laughs> I'm going to write. You're like this constant. You can't change Death when summer taxes is summer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move on, and now I'm going to go with fiction. So um, Jessie Burton's The Muse. So she's the miniaturist woman, she's right? She's the miniaturist woman. Amazing. Yes, amazing. And I have to say, I enjoyed The Muse even more. So that is high praise indeed. And I know this is going to make it sound like I spend a lot of time on public transport being <laughs> bored and needing something to do. But I um, had a copy of The Muse with me when I was in Germany. And I mm. had to catch a train from Mannheim to Berlin, which is like five, five and yeah, a half that's, hours. That's a it's a long way. <laughs> and to make matters worse, when I left Mannheim, there was a major misfunction with the door of my hotel room and my suitcase got locked inside but I was gonna <laughs> this could only happen to me <laughs> it really could so I had to leave someone else to pack my bags because I had to catch the train to, to do Diva an event move, Diva move. so I had to hop on and all I had was my handbag and thank god I if had you don't have a book when you're uh, no I know so I had the book and I read it solidly for that five and a half hours and I finished the last page just as we pulled into Berlin it was perfect. perfect and I loved it so this is a book called The Lake House by a kind of talented author called uh, Kate Morton who bears a striking resemblance <laughs> <laughs> to the lady we have with us today. Um, so if you guys haven't seen our Cornwall um, vlog, we went to Cornwall together, didn't we? We did. It and we was had an so adventure. Oh, it, was it was such a good rest, such a good holiday. It was. It, did, mm. it didn't feel mm. like work at all. <laughs> but we, we did some adventuring and we talked about the book we and did. it was really, really great. And now it's in paperback. It is. So it's ready to go in your handbag for summer. <laughs> Tell us in the comments below what your summer reads are. We'd love to, yes. add, to our, add to our reading pile. Yes. Why not? We're not busy this summer. It's no. fine. So far, what have we got? Seven. Yeah, exactly. We need at Easy. least That's only a that. book. <laughs> That's only a week's worth. Let us know below what you're reading. Uh, we'll link all the books we've talked about below, won't we? And uh, we'll see you in our next one. Bye. Bye. Bye for now. <laughs>